But do not think, oh, I'm a bodybuilder now. I'm lifting weights. Oh, I can't wait. This means now I have to stuff myself filled with calories. You are going to have to eat a lot, but eat the right things. Just don't eat everything. Time for the board a-hole here. And as I'm going to keep saying this week, because people keep mentioning the comments, yes, I look like death knocked on my door and kicked my ass. I got a stomach virus. I lost a tremendous amount of weight in a few days. Obviously, it's just water weight and everything like that, but it still makes you feel and look like crap. But the YouTube game never stops. I'll be 99, should I be so lucky, like Kylie Minogue, about to die, be on my deathbed when I'll make a video going on my deathbed and hope that it does some views. I wouldn't do that, but sometimes I worry I would. Anywho, kind of ironically, today is also a time to put something else to bed because I get these questions all the time and when I realize they're mounting up, I'm like, okay, well, I can just make a video about it. And then very when these kind people do get in touch, I can point them in a direction of said video and hopefully it's like a symbiotic relationship. So yes, indeed, these are the top eight rules when it comes to building muscle. Number eight is that bulking doesn't mean getting fat. Now we're gonna get into some other areas as we go, but I wanted to get this one out here first because I know how our audience retention works. And I mean, this has always been true, but it seems to be getting even more true in recent times, like I've come from the medieval era. Just because you need to put on some size and you need to put on some weight, that doesn't mean all of a sudden you go from, I mean, again, diet and stuff when it comes to bodybuilding is all over the place, but we use the stereotype. It doesn't mean you go from like chicken, rice, broccoli to pizza and chips, all right? That's what people think they should do. Is that, well, I need to be in good shape here so I eat healthy food oh no you're just gonna make your life so much harder on the other end because you bulk for six months and maybe you put on some muscle maybe you haven't I don't know it depends on how hard you have trained but you are 100% gonna put on a bunch of fat if all of a sudden you start producing these crazy crazy high calorie foods so then not only do you have to strip off more fat to see what muscle you actually did build but it's gonna take you longer to cut away to figure out what that is to begin with. So the best thing to do is find a sustainable diet that you enjoy all the time. And then when you want to increase that to try and put on size, you can just do that. And then you can just retract. It doesn't mean you can't have a cheat meal here and there. It doesn't mean you can't eat off plan as and when you feel like you need to. But muscle building does not mean eat a bunch of crap and just get really, really big. Unless that's what you're training for. Like if you go and see any kind of strong man or world's strongest man diet, you will see like Eddie Hall used to eat an entire cheesecake every day. And are you going to argue with Eddie Hall's results? No, he once did 500 kilograms and then blood came shooting out of his nose because his brain was like, what have you done? I just like to think it was his brain celebrating. Like the brain went, Foo! and it's like letting off confetti and it just came out of his nose and we all thought it was blood. But just always remember that. You can actually build muscle in a deficit, right? That's way controversial. You can't say that, but go out there on the internet and you can read about it. But do not think, oh, I'm a bodybuilder now. I'm lifting weights. Oh, I can't wait. This means now I have to stuff myself filled with calories. You are going to have to eat a lot but eat the right things, just don't eat everything. Number seven is that you've got to sleep. You've got to sleep and you've got to recover. Like the amount of messages I get with people saying, oh, Simon, I'm going to the gym now. I'm going to train seven days a week. Now, look, it may, it may work for you training seven days a week. I don't know. But your body grows when you are resting, when you are recovering. You go to the gym and you break the muscle down, like Degeneration X. And then when you are sleeping and recovering and when you're eating, you're essentially doing it back up again. I could not have simplified that and made it sound any more stupid if I tried. Then you just repeat the whole process. So you break it down, you build it up. You break it down, you build it up. But, you know, if you're not giving it a chance to build back up again and you keep breaking it down, you know, it's going to be like DX in the late 90s when Triple H turned all of them and he screwed them over and then they never got back together. They really didn't. Every time Degeneration X got to bit together after that, it was the Triple H Shawn Michaels version of DX. And I'm talking about the one with X-Pac and New Age Outlaws. I don't know how we got here. The point is you got to sleep. You got to recover. Like you see so many videos about building muscle and it's all about, you know, train this way, do that, lift this, progressive overload, eat all of this, the calories. But no one actually ever says sleep, recover, rest. And you'll have to figure it out by yourself. You have to do trial and error. How much you have to rest, how much you have to recover, but you need some. And I understand how hard it is to get eight hours sleep a night. I never get eight hours sleep a night because my body hates me, but at least try and, uh, you know, factor that into your day if you so can. Like six to eight hours, I would say, is essential. Try and get a nap in in the day. I mean, who the hell can nap in the day? I don't know. But you absolutely have to be doing that when it comes to building muscle. I now realize I should have called this sort of like the other rules for building muscle. But we started now, so we're going to keep on going. Number six is train muscles twice a week. When I say muscles, I'm talking about the individual muscles on your body. So train your biceps twice a week, train your back twice a week, train your chest twice a week, shoulders twice a week, blah, blah, so on and so forth. This is the best information and best advice I 
I ever got when I was lifting weights. I've been lifting weights for like 10, 12, maybe even 15, not that long, but around about 10 or so years before I hooked myself up with a personal trainer because I wanted to try and do a bodybuilding competition. And the first thing he did is he looked at my plan. And he said, why are you only training your muscle parts once a week? And that's because I thought that's just what you did. I thought if you were going to train body parts twice a week, you had to go on some kind of performance enhancing drug because I'd only ever read that in magazines that were clearly aimed at sort of super duper mass monsters or so I thought. I had completely confused myself. And he just said to me, no, keep it simple. Keep it maths, right? Weightlifting maths. If you train your back once a week, you're only training your back 52 times a year, which is true, right? You forget there's only 52 weeks in a year. So if you train it twice, that's 104 times, you're going to double the potential for growth. And he was 100% right. I did this for six months and I kind of transformed my physique. I mean, I'm not a great example of that at the moment, but I remember it's always good. It's always a good barometer for this. People are like, oh, Miller's got on drugs. But I was like, ha ha, it's worked. So I hadn't gone on drugs at all. So train twice a week. Now there's many ways you can do this. And the one that I am always going to put forward, boring, boring for the people that always hear me say this, is push, pull, legs, rest, push, pull, legs, rest. In push, you can work chest, shoulders and triceps in pull you can work your back and biceps and obviously on leg day you can work your legs i think it works tremendously uh, it gives you enough rest days as well which we have already talked about but honestly i'm not kidding around it completely changed how i approach the gym and the results i got from it so if you've never tried twice a week try twice a week today number five is don't give up after a day right don't give up after a day you see so many people who they go to the gym for go on january the 1st 2048 and by March the 1st, they're like, well, I haven't seen much of a difference, so I'm just not going to go anymore. Or I'm going to do something different. Or I'm going to change up my plans. Like, you don't know if something's worked in that short space of time. In two months? Two months? You don't know what's going to work in two months. Building muscle takes a long ass time. Now, if you get to eight months in and you really don't think things are working, or maybe six months, whatever, then sure, you probably need to look at it, unless you're a beginner. But then you're probably getting newbie gains anyway, so you'll be fine. But you have to allow these things to take time. I know marathon, not a sprint, is really dull, but there's a reason that phrase exists. And it's because so many people do just want to sprint off. And you're like, bro, if you would just marathon ran, you would have got to the destination you wanted to get, as opposed to running away and looking cool for a while, but then well, not even giving up. You've already crossed the finish line before you wanted to cross the finish line. And that's not what we're going for here. And you just have to accept it. You just have to accept that it sucks. And nobody will tell you this because they want to sell you a supplement or they want to sell you a special piece of clothing or they want to sell you a plan that says, I'll get you here in three weeks. And there's every chance it may work. You may be a genetic specimen. You may just happen to you know, get something great from a particular routine. But 99% of you aren't. I know, I'm sorry, you could hate me, throw stuff at my bald, stupid head, but that is the case. Sometimes you're gonna have to train for years before you even can look in the mirror and go, oh, look, that's what I've been going for. Which is why, much like your diet, you need to approach it in a way that you're going to enjoy it, that you're gonna get something out of it, that you're going to be rewarded in other ways before you start being visual changes. Now, it's not gonna be as long as that for most of you. I'm just saying it can be, and it could be. So just ensure you go in there with that knowledge, and then you can't be that disappointed, and know that eventually you will see what you want to see, and then you'll be happy as Larry. And who the flub is Larry? Nobody knows. Number four is an easy one, but train hard and train everything. Don't just ignore your legs or don't do back because you think it's boring. Ensuring that you are hitting every single muscle part is also going to help the other muscle parts because you are one body and you are all pushed together. Like when you train your legs, it's not a massive amount, but your body will release testosterone throughout the whole body and that's going to help you a little bit. Again, we are talking about tiny, tiny percentages here, but it's still true. And remember, of course, that you have to train hard. You have to do progressive overload, which for those who don't know is simply train harder than you did the week before. So if you are doing a bench press of 50 kilograms, and you did eight reps next week try and do 10 reps or go up to 51 kilograms that counts you can put half a kilogram on each side it's still an overload you've still gone higher and harder than you did before but nothing in life is that easy right everybody knows that and you do have to train hard in the gym now your hard is not going to be the same as somebody else's hard <laughs> sounds ridiculous but some people do this too they see someone doing a 300 kilogram deadlift which is crazy by the way as a stupid number for me to pick out of the air and they go like oh i can't do a 300 kilogram deadlift so i suck no even if you are doing the bar which weighs 20 kilograms by the way but that's good you're doing a 20 kilogram deadlift that's where you're at next week do a 22 kilogram deadlift and you're still going in the right direction but you have to be intense and you have to put the work in if you want your body to change it's not necessarily that your body is resistance to change either but your brain and your body is really smart it will try and adapt 
So what you're doing when you're in the gym is you're putting under incredible strain and incredible stress. And your brain and body knows this. It will go to ways to try and protect you. Hence, well, look, I've been ill recently, right? Lost a bunch of weight. But now I'm coming out the other side because my body went, right, this is something's wrong with his stomach. Send all our energy down there. Send all our little men and women down there to fix it. And then he'll get back on track. It's the same with the gym. Eventually we'll go, man, something's going on here. I should try and balance this out. And you've got to stay ahead of the game. And the way you're doing that is by training your ass off. It's just true. That's what you've got to do. And you'll still make certain games if you're only going at 75%. But if you go at 100%, well, you just plus it by 25%. And that doesn't mean whacking a bunch of weight on the bar and going. Rrr, 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 rrr. It just means going in there with the right attitude, the right focus and the right intensity and ensuring when you come out of the gym, you go, you know what? I couldn't have given any more. Right? That's the same with all walks of life. The same with YouTube. It's the same with your job, your relationships. The more you put into it, the more you get. Number three, and I bet the comments have already gone, I can't believe you didn't say this. I know, they're in a weird order. It's my order and I'll do whatever I want. And it's that you've got to be getting your protein in. You've got to be getting your protein in. Don't know why I feel like I have to repeat these twice. Like I'm the macho man, Randy Savage. This is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's cup of coffee in the big time. Yeah, cup of coffee in the big time. I'm not going to sit here and say you need 200 grams of protein or 300 grams of protein. You need to figure out what works for you. There's that equation online that I always say and get wrong. So I'm not going to say it. Just type in protein body weight equation and it will tell you. But trial and error is the best way to do that anyway. Because you could do that equation. It could tell you 200 grams of protein where actually you get away with 150 grams of protein and see exactly the same amount of the results. And then you'll be saving money and blah, blah, so on and so forth. But protein is the building block when it comes to muscles, right? You are not going to be able to build muscles unless you are getting in an adequate amount of protein. You don't even need to say anything else. That's just the truth. That's just the fact. You want it to be carbohydrates and fats because carbohydrates and fats taste delicious, but they don't. We still need them. Don't worry about it. However, do worry about it because number two is do not be scared of carbs and body fats. It's a terrible segue. Somebody should shoot me out of a cannon. But yes, all these things are going to work together to get you the physique that you want. So therefore, they are all responsible for building muscle. Doesn't mean you can't do a keto diet when you cut out carbohydrates. You can do intermittent fasting. There's a bunch of options. Once again, you need to read about it and you need to figure out what works for you. But you need carbohydrates for energy and you need essential fatty acids for a number of reasons, one of which is trying to build muscle. Again, it's going to be of lesser importance, but it's still in the important scale, and that's what matters. But carbs and fats aren't going to make you fat. What is going to make you fat is overeating. Simple as that. Like even if you just ate chicken breast, it's gonna be a lot harder. But eventually, if you keep up and up on your chicken breast, you'll get to the point where your body will be like, I don't know what you want me to do with this chicken breast. Therefore, I'm just going to store it as fat. But if you are trying to put on muscle, you're going to need carbohydrates and you're going to need fats. In my humble opinion, like I already said, there's other diets that you can try. But if we're really breaking it down, and attacking it in the most simplest way possible. It just stands to reason, right? Let's let's talk about it like we're trying to explain it to a child. Carbs will give you some energy, allowing protein to build your muscles. Now, it doesn't really work like that, but at least it gives you an image and something to aim for. And the number one rule is that it takes forever. You've got to be consistent. And a lot of the time, you're not going to want to go, but you should go anyway. That's the truth. That's the honest truth. Nobody enjoys going to the gym all the time. Sometimes your body is actively saying to you, I will do anything if you don't go to the gym. And what you should do in those occasions is that you should go anyway and just pretend, tell yourself, oh, I'll only do half a workout. So say you train for 90 minutes. Today, you're only going to train for 45. And by the time you're 20 minutes in, you'll be like, you know what? This is fine. I'm getting my endorphin rush. I'm just going to, to, to keep on smashing it. Now, we've kind of already hinted at the whole it takes forever kind of a thing, but I felt like it was important to double down on because so many people don't realize this. It's going to take you a long ass time. There are stories out there that people have been bodybuilding their whole life. And really, when you calculate the amount of muscle they've actually put on, it's not crazy huge or anything like that, but they just have to sit down and go, 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 go. So if you really, really want the too long, didn't read version, which makes no sense because at the end of the video, get your protein in, make sure you're working hard, be as patient as you can possibly be, and don't overeat just because you think you're on a bulk and make sure your protein, your carbs and fats are all working together, right? There's stuff you can read online that's going to help you, but ultimately it's going to come down to you. It's going to come down to your physique. It's going to come down to your body and how it reacts to all of these things. And that's a flip of a coin. I mean, look at me. I've got Gerald the Fitness mascot. I've got Stan the Gains giraffe. Do you think they train the same? Of course they don't. They have their own individualities that they have to figure out. I have made a ton of mistakes in the past. I'm making a ton of mistakes now. Never think you know it all. Always keep your ears open. Always be happy to be told different, but also be confident in with yourself. That if you do try something new and it doesn't work, just go, okay, it wasn't for me because there is not a one-stop shop. However, there are certain rules you need and we just talked about them 
You just need to manipulate them for you. So there you go, the eight rules of building muscle that everybody should be doing, and now you don't agree, but it's fine. You can go into the comments and you can call me an absolute moron. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Uh, there's another video right there. Give it a click, hit the bell, ding, ding, so you know when other videos are going live. Patreon, Twitter, at SimonMiller316, where well, everything's at Simon316. Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, uh, merchandise, SimonMiller.BigCartel.com. But otherwise, if you're starting out at the gym, good luck. If you're way into your gym journey, keep smashing it. If you're going to the gym today, have the best session of your life, and I'll see you on the next one.